Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek Artist and welcome to the second episode of Photoshop Basics Tutorial for Beginners. If you haven't seen the first part yet, please make sure to check that out first before watching this because that covers the foundation and is very important in order for you to understand what I'll teach in this part. So go ahead and check it out, the links in the video description and at the end of the video as well as in the cards on the top right. Now a quick recap of Photoshop Basics Part 1. I had explained the layouts, setting up the canvas, undocking, and I started with the tools. I had covered the arrow tool, murky tool and its types, lasso tool and its types, and the selection tool and its types. So today on this episode, I'll continue from the crop tool. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please make sure to do that. Click on the bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And make sure to do the same on the phone app as well. Let's go! So we'll start off with the crop tool. Now what the crop tool does, as you can understand, is it simply crops your image. Uh, you can click on any of these pointers at the corners and you can drag them. And as you can see, the parts that are graying out or darkening out are the parts that will be cropped out of the final result. If I let's say I want to crop just these two characters, once they're done, uh, I can either click on this check or I could simply press enter and they'll be cropped. And that's pretty much what the crop tool does. There are other options as well, none of which are really important. I mean, I never find myself using those, any of these options. Uh, next, we'll move on to the eyedropper tool all the eyedropper tool does is pick colors and that's all it does let's say you want to pick the skin tone from here you just click on it once and as you can see on this box at the bottom left corner it gets picked if I want to pick the color of the sky there you go if I want to pick the color of the fire click on it and it gets picked that's how you, you pick colors with the eyedropper tool Next up, we come to Spot Healing Brush Tool. This is a very handy tool which you can use for repairing images, for, for retouching images, for, re, for removing uh, uh, scratches or noises from damaged images. You can also use them for removing watermarks from images and also for cleaning fine details or pimples from skin. So, um, let's say I want to get rid of these debris, this fire flares, or debris, whatever you call them. Uh, I'll just select the spot healing brush tool. And I'll just paint on top of this debris and it'll get cleaned. Just, cleaned. just as you can see, it gets removed, deleted. What this tool does is that when you click on something like this, it samples the colors from the surrounding areas and overlays that color on top of this so I can keep cleaning all these debris like this and it's like they were never even there in the first place uh, pretty cool right but the problem is that you don't always get results the way you want let's say I want to remove the debris from this area it gets removed but if I want to remove the debris from this area as you can see there's a uh, black spot over that because it's sampling color from the outside area so not the perfect tool every time you can bring the size down for smaller areas finer finer selection and yeah you get good results for that but again it's not the ideal tool and you won't find it useful in every situation next up we come to healing brush tool so once I select the healing brush tool it won't work the same way as the previous spot healing brush tool because this one requires you to pick uh, a certain area that you want to sample on top of this let's say uh, I want to sample the sky on top of this in debris so I'll click on this I'll alt and click rather like that's how you sample that's how you sample the texture alt 
and as you can see the cursor is changing alt click and paint on top of, top of it alt click alt click and it gets sampled and there you go again alt I'll decrease the size alt click and sampled now remember one thing uh, when you're sampling remember to sample from areas that are clean that ha don't have any debris around them let's let around them let's want to sample from this area I click on this and I click and drag it as you can see it's picking up can you see the crosshair that cross the crosshair is picking up the other debris and it just overlays the whole thing on top of that so remember to uh, sample from areas that are clean next up we come to patch tool uh, patch tool is something that I really love because it more or less gives you very good results how well let's say I wanna replace this with something else I select this I click on it and I take it to a clean area and as you can see the results is very neat and clean I want to do it to this select click on it drag it out and as you can see the results clean like it was never there in the first place there gone amazing tool next up we come to content aware move tool content aware move tool what it does is it duplicates a select selected area which you can move around any to any place you want and what happens to the original uh, selected area is that it gets cleaned let's say I want to move the mouth of this character down upwards so I select the mouth I click on this area and I drag it up and as you can see the previous mouth kind of it's gets deleted and it gets shifted to its original position I can again bring it down and as you can see the previous mouth gets deleted and the new duplicate or the new clone gets I can do the, the same with the eyes see the previous position gets deleted and yeah that's how the content aware move tool works and next up we have the red eye tool now I'll need to use a different example this is a study fan out of drags from Gods of the Galaxy Volume 2. Let's say we need to, we need to take photographs of people with a flash. What what happens is the because of the flash, the eye the eyes they reflect the flash and you have this red sort of effect glowing thing. It looks weird. And you can heal those, you can repair those. Just drag, click drag and it will darken those places and you you get rid of the redness there done that's how you repair the red areas so that's that's everything with the spot healing tool and all the different healing options next up we come to brush tool a very basic good and old brush tool which you can use for coloring um, painting sketching whatever over here you have further options that you, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush you can change the shape of your brush just rotate it or make it less round more of a calligraphic style you can increase or decrease the hardness by bring the hardness down you get a soft blurry kind of effect if I bring the hardness up it becomes very sharp with sharp edges and you have all these different choices of brushes that you can just pick from you can download and import custom brushes and everything next up and then you have opacity which you can increase or decrease if I decrease opacity to 20 whatever percent you can see uh, it becomes very light if I increase it it goes up and over here you have two more options this is for pressure sensitivity if you're using a graphic pen tab that's pressure sensitive then you can use this for increasing or decreasing the pass increasing or decreasing the opacity based on the pressure that you exert and this is for the thickness the more pressure you apply the thicker the and bigger the brushes and 
there. Next up we have pencil tool. Pencil tool works just like the brush tool except it's much thinner. It looks like you're drawing sketching with a pencil. Next we have the mixer brush tool uh, which is used for blending colors actually. Uh, if I want to blend this area, as you can see it's a sharp high contrast area, I can just do this, just paint on top of this as, and you can see the edge is getting blended smoothly. If you want to learn how to blend colors in Photoshop in depth then I have made a separate tutorial on four different ways of blending color in Photoshop. Go ahead and check it out. You'll learn a lot from that. And even if you want to see all the four different ways of coloring in Photoshop, I've done a tutorial on that as well. Go ahead and check it out. Links in the description as well as at the end of the video. And then we come to the clone stamp tool. Clone stamp tool works a lot like spot healing tool. Let's say I want to duplicate this debris I'll, I'll alt and click on it and I'll I can just create as many of these as I want do click click sample and I can make create as many of them as I want and that's how it works the pattern stem tool just is something I never use it just creates pattern on top of your image something I never use so you can skip that next up we have the history brush tool what the history brush tool does is it erases all the functions or effects that you've um, applied on your image let's say just for the sake of saying I, I apply I do a lot of things not even on a new new layer I just do everything on this very layer I don't even have to take a new layer let's say I want to um, creating new patterns on his shirt new flowers and even some scribbles right on top of it random scribbles and then I'm, got, I'm blurring it a bit with the blur tool that will just come to next and then I'm smudging it all these effects on this very layer and then I just go to the history brush tool and the brush tool deletes everything all these effects that I've done it deletes all of it that's how the tool works next we have the art history brush tool now this is an interesting effect what it does is it not only deletes everything that you've done all the effects that you've applied on it but it also creates a hybrid version of all the different effects that you have used before this and creates uh, it combines all those effects and creates a hybrid effect which replaces whatever you have that you want to delete so as you can see this creates this new effect that looks really cool what it's actually a, a mixture of this blur tool and smudge tool the two effects that i used last yeah so pretty cool sorry yeah, it, like it almost looks like heat waves. So it's something you can use. You can create a combination of this, and you can you have your own new effects you can use to simulate heat effect. And next up, we come to eraser tools. You can understand it's something we use for erasing everything. It's I've sketched something on top of this. Sorry, I'll take a new layer and sketch something scribbles and I can delete that with the eraser tool and next up we have the background eraser tool which lets us delete the background now how is this different from regular eraser tool well regular eraser tool lets us have complete control over what we're deleting so the computer has no say in it let's say I want to delete the background and if I by mistake end up delete end up erasing certain areas from within the skin it gets deleted computer does not interfere the AI doesn't say anything but 
in case of magic ra sorry background razor tool the computer identifies the software identifies which is the background and which is the subject depending on where you're clicking it and accordingly deletes you see if I, even if i uh, the brush enters the area within the face it doesn't delete it it only deletes the background of course if i push too hard it will delete it but you can have a certain amount of control over that and it's pretty effective and save time as well you can just go on r doing a rough delete spree and just delete everything and delete the background like that very simple and easy and a very smart tool next up we have magic razor tool magic razor tool just deletes everything around the space that you click on given that the tone of color are similar let's say the sky I click on it and it deletes the sky as long as the colors, color, colored areas surrounding it are similar. If I want to select the fire, click on it and it dele deletes all of it. The skin, face, everything it deletes. The legs, click and it deletes. You don't, it's, it's a lot like magic selection tool except it saves a step in magic selection tool if you want to uh, select and delete a certain area you have to select that whole thing and then click on delete from your keyboard or some other options but over here you can just click and delete in the same step that's the fun thing about photoshop if you want to achieve an effect there's no fixed way of doing it there are multiple different ways of doing it, and it's up to you about which step you adopt and get comfortable with you have so many options and you can just go with whichever one you like that's the that's the great thing about photoshop Next, we have gradient tool. Gradient tool just as, you, as 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 the name suggests, you can create gradient color effect on top of an image. Let's say I just click and drag from outside the canvas, and I get this. It looks like sun ray, like, like heat waves or sun wave coming from outside. It creates that gradient thing. Cool. And if you if you want an, an uniform effect, then you can click on shift and drag it. You have a straight line, so a, a very straight, uniform, horizontal, sorry, vertical gradient. And you can select the color of gradient. If you want set yellow effect, then pick the color from there and you have that. And I can also I, I also have all these different selections, the types of gradients. You can even create your custom gradients. This one I have over here. This is what you get. All these different tools. And then you have more of such as a radio. You can you can click on certain source of light or whatever, click on it, drag it out, and you have that. And then there's the reverse, which is something like this, a cool, cat edgy kind of style. Anyway, and then we have, next up we have the blur tool. The blur tool, as you can understand, it just blurs. You can click on, select on blur tool and just paint it top of certain area. As you can see, it blurs it out, it blurs it. And then there's sharpen tool, which again, sharpens it but it also decreases the quality of the image it pixelates it that's what it does and then you have the smudge tool which kind of smudges your image like that smudge tool can also be used for blending colors let's say i want to blend this area with the blue so i can just go on smudging and it kind of as you can see it blends it. it. It's a lot like uh, the mixer brush tool in ways. But I don't recommend using the smudge tool for blending colors. As, as I said before, I have a separate tutorial on blending colors, which you can go and check out right now. And then we move on to dodge tool. What the dodge tool does is it brightens the image. It adds more brightness and contrast. If I want to increase the brightness of the face, I can 
select the dodge tool and just paint over the face you can see the brightness of the face increases yeah and then we have the burn tool it decreases the brightness and adds more contrast see it darkens and decreases the brightness of the image as I paint on top of it and then we have sponge tool which decreases the saturation that is it pushes the colors towards black and white or grayscale see uh, it becomes black and white and the whole thing looks so much creepy now like the, the dead ghosts damn well and then we have pen to pen tool now pen tool is a whole department altogether you can use pen tool for professional graphic designing and logo designing and whatnot and I'll make separate tutorials and all these tools and I'll make a very in-depth tutorial on pen tool itself but I'll give you an overall idea on pen tool uh, you can use pen tool for uh, clean very clean selections let's say I want to have a almost completely round selection so I'll just click on click thrice and create a complete uh, selection then I'll go to add anchor points I'll click on this area and I'll click and drag it out I can change the way the curve works I can make it curvier or more pointier like that I can create more options like that And I almost have an egg shape. I can also delete anchor points like this. So yeah, I have some kind of shape. I don't know what shape is more a lot like an egg shape. And what I can do with this is I can click on this and I can make selection. So it becomes a selection which I can fill with color like all the backspace and it get fill, gets filled with color a perfect clean selection what I can also do is instead of doing that I can use this as path around which I can uh, do a line art so I'll just go to brush ones decrease the size and with everything said come back to pen tool right thing on this area and uh, stroke path and it creates the stroke I can delete the path and you can see a very clean line closed circle I can also directly fill this fill path and it fills with with the color so yeah and let's see you end up deselecting the whole thing you can go to convert point tool and select it and there are further applications of this which I'll cover in the pen tool mm, tutorial there's also the free pen tool you can you can use it to you know freely uh, create selected areas and the end you can just uh, play around with how the curves work transform them and do whatnot uh, so the possibilities are endless with pen tool next up we come to text basic stuff you click on something and you type you I can click or uh, select the color from over here and that's how you do it if you want to change the font click on the whole thing or you can simply keyboard shortcut alt a the whole thing that's selected you come to this drop down and you have all these options I have many imported custom imported uh, fonts you can download them and use them and then I have I can increase or decrease size I can also freely increase the size by I can either go to image sorry edit and free transform or there's a so you can use the keyboard shortcut control T and you have this pointers which you can use to in uh, scale this if you want to scale this thing uniformly then click on shift and increase it so it will give you a uniform scale instead of distorted stuff like this yeah and you have further options over here
you can change the alignment and you can do more stuff that, that is you can make it thicker you can make it italics and line spacing and whatnot lots of different options that i will cover in the other the text tutorial which i'll do later on path selection tool is something i'll cover with um the path tutorial next up is rectangular tool this is a lot like pen tool this is a kind of shape tool you can say i can create shapes which i can fill with color i can uh, change the size of the border increase decrease and i can e even uh, change the color of the border and i can create a lot of different i can even shapes with it the same i can do with lip and i can even edit this with pen tool and i can even add more points and further edit it with the pen tool and then we have further options then we have custom paint custom shape tool where you get lots of custom shapes that you can create and you can even import them check the comic bubble You can edit the color from up here. Mm, black. Increase the size. Yep. So you, there you have it. Your speech bubble. And then we have the hand tool. With which you can click and scrub or move your canvas around. And next up we have rotation tool with which you can rotate your canvas. Um, the shortcut is R. Select on R and you can rotate it around. One thing I did miss is from gradient tool, the paint bucket tool. Just like the way gradient tool works, you can create gradients. So you can use the paint bucket tool to fill a particular area with color. Let's say I want to fill this bright patch of blue with yellow or green click on it once and it gets filled with green color yep that's how it works then you have the magnifying tool which you can use for zooming in and out make sure you have the scrubby zoom option on so you have you can just drag it up and down in order to zoom it the keyboard shortcut for this is alt middle mouse button and move it around to zoom in or zoom out so now that i've covered all the basics and given you an overall idea of all the different tools and their applications you have officially graduated as a level one photoshopper so you should be proud of that next up i'll be doing more advanced tutorial on all the different tools and their further applications and their types and i'll also cover other topics such as how to achieve certain effects using photoshop and there are like scores of scores of uh, tutorial topics that i'll be covering and there's a lot to learn there's a lot that i have to teach and there's a lot out there for you to learn so make sure to subscribe to my channel because lots of other contents are coming up i've started off with photoshop and i'll also cover softwares like adobe premiere pro and editing so if you have any requests if there's any topic that you want me to cover or make tutorials on make sure to write that down in the comment section and i'll definitely look into it that's a promise new videos releasing every sunday so subscribe and stay tuned so until next time goodbye